Hello, my name is James Dixon, this is my piano course, and welcome to lesson one. There are many kinds of piano course available on the net, but the James Dixon piano course is the one that you should get. So this is the song that we're going to learn by the end of today's lesson. Okay, now I do apologise for my singing voice, I do sing all of my songs in the key of off. Okay, I hope that it's really not off-putting, but uh, ultimately you can see that this is quite a nice song to learn. Okay, it sounds fairly advanced, we're using many of the keys, and that's a great thing. But in this lesson, not only are we going to learn that song, we're also going to learn how never to hit a wrong note. So let's get into it. It turns out that the black notes are the key to us understanding how to play the piano without ever hitting a wrong note. You see, normally when we hit a dud note, it sounds kind of like this. And the way we hit a dud note is by playing two notes together that are in sequence together. Okay, and that's usually what creates a dud sounding note. But you'll notice that this pentatonic scale here, the black notes, don't have any notes directly to, next to each other. They're separated. And because they're separated, we can't ever really hit two notes together that make an awful noise. Even if we press multiple at the same time, they all sound fairly good together. So here's the top tip. If you only play the black notes, you'll never hit a wrong note because they all sound fairly harmonic with each other. They don't sound like this, which is very dissonant, okay? And that's really, really important, okay? So our first cheat on the piano is to only play the black notes and that allows us to never hit a wrong note. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a finger and we're gonna place it on one of the black notes. And we're going to place it on a specific black note, which is, um, as you can see, there's like there are groups of two and three all the way along. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the group of two, and we're going to place our finger on the note to the left of that. Okay, so the leftmost note of this group of two. Okay, we're then going to take our right finger, and we're going to go along until we find the next group of two, and again we're going to play the leftmost note of that group of two. Now this, if we play them together, is known as an octave. Okay, again, another piece of musical terminology, but all it means is these two notes like this. Okay, now if I move my finger slightly to the right to play the next note, that's also an octave. If I come up here, that's an octave. As long as my fingers are playing basically the same note, Right, in the same kind of position in each of these things, that is known as an octave. And what we're going to do is we're going to take your hand like this, okay, uh, your right hand, and what we're going to do is place the thumb on this leftmost note of this group of three black notes here, okay. Then we're going to take the index finger, put it on the middle note, the middle finger on the rightmost note, this uh, ring finger on the leftmost note of the group of two, and the pinky finger on the rightmost note of the group of two. Okay, so I'm placing my hand on these five notes. Do, 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 right? And you see that my hand is kind of, you know, naturally kind of curved over, as if it's kind of maybe resting on a, on a, like a basketball or something. Okay, and you can see that, and I can press down each of the notes. And I can play them in an ascending order. And I can play them in a descending order. Okay, it doesn't matter which I use. Okay, and I can keep repeating that pattern. And if I want to, right, I could play notes together. Right, it doesn't matter, I can play as many notes together, I can play them all. Right, I can play just four or three or two, and it doesn't matter how many I'm hitting together, and again, I can play this randomly. Okay, I can do whatever I want. And in the bass, right, I can now start playing the, the black notes as octaves, okay? As I'm playing stuff with my right hand. So 
already I'm starting now really to create music. And all I'm doing is just moving my hands up and down on the certain notes that I've placed them on and changing the octave in the bass. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave our hand on this uh, on these five five notes here, starting with the. But this time with our left hand, what we're going to do is we're going to place it on the leftmost note of this group of three, and we're going to play the octave. Okay, so the first line that we're going to play uh, in the song is there are many kinds of piano chords. Okay, um, so we're going to start here, and we're just going to randomly move our, our hand, our fingers here, with the right hand. There are many kinds of piano chords. Okay, so again. And we can play whatever we like. Alright, and we just sing at the same time. There are many kinds of piano chords. And I'm not playing anything specifically here, I'm just playing stuff generally. So you don't want to try and necessarily copy me exactly, you're just wanting to play so that you have a fairly nice sound and you can play notes together or individually, it's up to you, just kind of whatever feels right. Right, so once we've sung that line, we're ready to move on, okay? So we started off on this leftmost note of this group of three with our left hand, and we're now going to move this over to the next black note here, which is this rightmost note of the group of two. Okay? And that's just available on the net. Available on the net. Right? So that's all that is. Available on the net. So if we go back to the beginning. There are many kinds of piano chords. Move over. Available on the net. Right? And now we're going to move our left hand again. Down to the next black note, which is here. Okay, it's the leftmost note of the group of two. But the James Dixon piano chords. Right? But the James Dixon piano chords. Again, just playing random things in this hand. Some notes together, some notes individually. It doesn't matter what we play. Right? But the James Dixon piano chords. At this point, we take our left hand and we move up to the center of these three black notes. This one here. Is the one that you should. Is the one that you should, is the one that you should. And then to, f to finish it off, we're going to take our left hand back to where it started, right, on the leftmost note of this thing, of this group of three, and we say, um, is the one that you should get. Okay, so let's do the whole thing. There are many kinds of piano chords available on the net But the James Dixon piano course is the one that you should get Okay, and um, with this right hand we're also going to finish on the leftmost note of this group of three So this is playing the octave and this is playing this next note here just a... So we get that nice final finished sound and um, we can even run our hands just down the black notes like that. Okay, now this might take a tiny bit of getting used to, you know, um, coordinating yourself to actually hit specific um, black notes as your hand is, is moving, but be, be free in the kind of idea that your hand can do uh, almost whatever it wants, and this hand is just moving like this, which should be fairly easy for you to do. Okay. So really try and work with it and kind of play and try and sing along so that you know roughly when you have to move. Okay? And as you sing, you can try and match your voice to the to the notes that you're playing in your right hand. Okay? So what are we going to learn in lesson two? Well, we're going to build on what we learned in lesson one. So the more we kind of experiment with there and different kind of, you know, softness, you know, uh, some aggressiveness, you know, just playing different notes and kind of really starting to get familiar with the instrument, we're now going to move on to the white notes and we're going to do similar kind of things on those. We should be able to create a song that sounds so advanced that people will think that we've been playing for years. So I'll give you an example of what that will sound like.
would agree that sounds pretty good, and we're going to learn that by the end of this lesson. So by the end of lesson two, this is how good you're going to sound. <laughs> 